Hey, yo, everybody. Zach Cords here with Revzilla, and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider. You know the deal. We're going to learn about a motorcycle as we ride. And today we're going to learn very quietly. This, everybody, is a Zero FXE, a fully electric motorcycle that weighs 300 pounds and costs $12,000. Now you might be thinking, wait, 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 back up. How much does it cost to fill up with electricity? How far can I go on a single charge? Can I do wheelies? Is it even fun? Well, those are good questions, and they're questions that we're going to answer right now. <laughs> Okie dokie, daily riders. Now we got a Zero FXE, fully electric, 300 pounds, uh, and it's pretty small. 300 pounds is pretty small for a motorcycle, if you're not familiar. <laughs> um, and uh, it feels pretty small, as we'll talk about when we ride. Um, you'll see that it's quite dirty. I rode it in the rain, so if you're looking for a uh, rain review, then I got you covered. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but basically, the, the thing about the Zero FXC that's uh, most notable, I think, is that it's very clean aesthetically, right? It's got a sort of simple design, um, one sort of a fuselage of plastic that goes along um, the top of the bike. And then other than that, it's pretty basic. A swing arm, a fork, two wheels, a little headlight with a tiny beak. Um, and aside from that, it's very basic. It, it looks very simple. And as we'll find out, it's pretty simple to ride. And yeah, aside from that, there's not a whole lot of uh, architecture to discuss. Uh, show a suspension. It's got uh, J. Juan brakes, which are, you know, not Brembo's, but uh, steel braided brake line, which is always a nice touch and a nice big single rotor. And like I said, it's a pretty small light bike, so um, it doesn't need a ton of brake as we will learn. But yeah, it's a, it's a pretty simple, simple thing, really. Um, and I think we're just about ready to go. So we'll fire up this dash of Mahuzit, um, which is a kind of a nice clean TFT dash here. You can see we are in eco mode. We have a 100% charge despite riding from my house to the uh, daily rider <laughs> uh, location. Oh, I got a reset trip too. Okay, so that's that's first things first. But that's a quick rundown of the bike, and I think uh, we're just about ready to get started here. A little LED light shining us in the face. Um, sticker on the fender says Bosch ABS. It's another thing we'll talk about as we ride. But first, let's uh, reset trip two here so that we have the correct can track our mileage. There we go. Okay. We are in eco mode. Trip two is at zero. And we're ready to rumble, everybody. Let's do it. And we're off. So, first thing that's probably worth talking about is the fact that it only says 39 miles of range <laughs> on a full charge, as I pointed out. Which is... Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's worth questioning, I think. Um, but uh, range sometimes shows as high as the 70s, high 70s, uh, when you first start out. But the bike is um, reactive to the way that you ride. And the last trip that I did, I was pretty brutal on the battery, if I'm being honest. I was in sport mode and I went on the highway a lot. And when you do that, uh, the range figure um, plummets. And so the bike is, uh, I think right now, expecting me to do the same, which is why the range figure is so poor. But for the time being, we're a little bit behind on specs. We gotta jump into that. So I did mention uh, the price, $12,200, and that's without the uh, accessory optional fast charging. Uh, so this just charges um, with a, a little extension cord that I forgot to show you and a little port that I forgot to show you. <laughs> um, plugs into your wall and uh, charges approximately overnight. Especially if you run the battery down pretty far, you're gonna wanna charge it eight or nine hours. More to the point, it is a 7.2 kilowatt hour maximum capacity battery, which is approximately half, or a little bit less than half the size of a lot of Zero's bikes. Um, there's a 14.4 and then there might even be a 17 point something. Not sure exactly. The point is, it's a small battery and it's a small bike, and therefore the range is uh, is lessened. Uh, the seat height is 32 point something inches, <laughs> 32.9 maybe, 32.7. Well, I'll put it on screen just to be sure. There we go. Um, it uh, it reads as kind of a tall seat height, um, but I find it to be very approachable and reasonable. 
the pegs are kind of high. So when we talk about ergonomics, the 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 seat to peg distance is kind of short, especially for a taller person. I'm six foot two, um, so I would I would opt for a taller seat if I could. But I think that Zero made the right call making this bike uh, this size. Okie doke. So you will notice we're at 40 miles now. <laughs> So we've gained a mile of range, even though we've gone almost three miles on the daily ride so far. And like I said, that's because the bike is sort of uh, reacting. It's not sure what's happening exactly or what I'm gonna do next. And of course, what we're gonna do next is get on the freeway, which is gonna be very bad for the battery and range. So we'll be able to, um, be able to watch the, the range <laughs> estimate um, and the total energy out, output of the bike change quite a bit here in a second. But yeah, here we go. We're in eco mode. We're going 65, 70 miles an hour down the freeway here. It's not a great highway bike uh, in general. Oh yeah, so in eco mode also maximum speed is 70 miles an hour. So I'm pinned right now, wide flipping open. Uh, and that's like a, a little bit of a weird feeling sometimes on the freeway to only be able to go 70 miles an hour. But um, we will solve that problem in just a moment here as soon as I can determine that nobody is too close behind me. Uh, and I will switch to, I'm gonna go to, uh, I wanna go to sport mode, there we go. I close the throttle, come on. I can't pull in the clutch, because there's no clutch, there we go. Now we're in sport mode. <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong. But now as you can see, you can zip up past 70 miles an hour uh, if you want to. And uh, the, the throttle response is um, a little sharper and there's more power on tap and a little bit less regenerative braking when you shut the throttle. I did get some questions about riding on the freeway on this bike, whether I felt safe and secure, and uh, I think I do, frankly. Um, I mean, it's a small motorcycle. I feel the same as I would on any other 300 pound or 350 pound motorcycle, which is just sort of, it feels a little small, but um, this bike is perfectly stable, and um, and yeah, it's, it's fine aside from the sort of obvious shortfalls of being a, a small bike with, you know, um, no weather protection, that kind of thing. It's obviously more of an urban runabout, so, uh, the freeway is not really where it wants to live from a structural standpoint or uh, an electric vehicle standpoint but uh, in general not a lot of complaints it cruises along here just fine this is often the part of the ride where we talk about fuel mileage and uh, since we're going to talk about the the uh, fxe's range a lot i won't belabor it too much but to answer a question directly i've been getting between 40 and 50 miles of range per charge now, that being said, I have uh, been taking more surface streets than I normally do. Here in Los Angeles, you take freeways to get absolutely everywhere, and uh, freeways are particularly hard on this bike. So if you got a big freeway commute, this isn't gonna be your machine, I don't think. But um, for surface streets and the kind of riding that we're gonna do in the, in the second half of the daily ride, uh, I think you'll see that it makes more sense and it's easier on the machine in general. Last thing we usually talk about in this stretch of road is mirrors, and the Zero FXE's mirrors are dead smooth. And you can probably guess why, because nothing's vibrating down there. There's no engine, pistons flying around, or any vibration of any sort, really. It's just uh, so, so smooth, as electric motorcycles often are, and the mirrors are just, just perfectly clear. And I gotta say, I love that. It's, uh, it's a nice feature, you might say. Okay, this is our first real red light situation so we're gonna kind of like punch it away from here and we're gonna see what happens i just can't resist i want to do a little wheelie and i know for a fact this bike does wheelies <laughs> that was fun okie doke into the neighborhood and the stop sign challenge where we try to get zero mile an hour stops without putting our feet down oh yeah nice and easy Oop, big pothole there nice and easy um low speed neighborhood style riding is really where um, most electric bikes really but especially the zero fxe shines because there's no clutch there's no transmission um, it's just a twist and go situation like with um, a scooter or something um, but all the you know all the the power on tap is really uh, almost tipped over on that one but i think we got it all the power is very accessible um, and yeah, it's just, it's tuned to all be right there. And I find the throttle response very, very, very good on this Zero. Better than almost any electric bike that I can remember. Um, and better than internal combustion bikes, certainly. I realized actually I just mentioned power and power 
was 48 horsepower claimed, which doesn't sound like all that much, but I think almost 80 foot-pounds of torque, something like 78 foot-pounds of torque. Friendly reminder that the specs are listed in the description of this video, um, for those of you who like to pour over that kind of thing, as well as a first ride article from a colleague at Revzilla that will have more information on the um, specs of the bike. But yeah, point being, not a big horsepower number, but a pretty big torque number, and when you're riding around town, it certainly feels like it's got plenty of pop behind uh, the throttle. <laughs> All right, come up to our final stop sign here. Feeling pretty confident. Oh my goodness, this is the, probably the easiest, the easiest uh, footless stops I've ever done on Daily Rider. I honestly wasn't necessarily expecting that. It's good at low speed and I do love the throttle response, but I don't, I mean, it's, it doesn't have like an especially low center of gravity, or does it? I don't know, maybe, you know, the battery's pretty low just behind the front uh, wheel there. I don't know, anyway, it, whatever it is, the balance is is just uh, excellent. It's, it's uh, top of the line when it comes to low speed balance, according to the uh, stop sign challenge we just did there. <laughs> also, as we peel on to Lover's Lane here, I gotta say I like the I like a quiet bike in a neighborhood. I don't know. I I live in a neighborhood, as many of us do, <laughs> and um, you know, there's plenty of data that shows that loud pipes do not, in fact, save lives. But um, but quiet bikes save some sanity. You know, I don't really like it when loud bikes go by my house. So I can appreciate probably that these people don't even realize that I'm just peeling by here. At a whisper. What? Oh, holy crap! I, I spent Lover's Lane talking about uh, quiet bikes and not about passenger accommodations. The discussion is quick about passenger accommodations on the Zero FXE, which is that they are minimal. Um, the seat's very small back there, and there's not a ton of legroom. It's sort of supermoto style, you know. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're going to take a passenger. But it's really more of a solo bike in general, I think. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so much fun. So as we peel into the uh, twisty road section of the daily ride here, we are of course stuck behind luxury sedans, which are very prevalent in this neighborhood. Um, but uh, more to the point, the uh, Zero FXE handles really nicely. I really like it. It's definitely got that sort of uh, small, um, sort of supermoto feel. You know, wide handlebar. Um, you can you can slide forward on the seat. The seat's got a little um, kind of cup in the in the bottom of it or in the in the middle of it where you know you're meant to you're meant to sit but you can slide way forward and ride it supermoto style um crotch on the tank uh or you can kind of sit back a little more conventional riding position but in any case it handles nicely it's super light to the touch it doesn't mind falling into corners um i think it's a very welcoming and enjoyable bike to ride on a road like this um you'll just need the road like this to be not too far from your house because um you know, you're gonna have to get home and it's only about uh, 40, 50 miles of total range. So that's something to consider. But in general, it handles great, I think. At any rate, while we're stuck in traffic here, um, I should mention the ride modes. Uh, so I did switch from eco to sport uh, while we were on the freeway there. And there is one more mode, custom which is, as you might imagine, customizable in the Zero app. You can go in and change the settings for regenerative braking and uh, throttle response, that kind of thing. But I found Eco in Sport to be basically exactly what I need. If I, if I need to take it easy, I put it in Eco and the bike has a little bit more range capability. I mostly leave it in Sport though, because the power is not overwhelming, even in Sport. And if you want to ride it eco style, you certainly can. We just went down a couple miles there of road and I never really opened the throttle, just sort of took it easy. And uh, as a result, we gained a mile of range coming down that hill. So yeah, I don't know. That's uh, the ride modes are simple, but effective, you might say. All right, we're gonna hit the little uh, tree root jump here. Where is it? It's in the shade, it's a little hard to see. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> all right. It's fun, kind of supermoto lifestyle. You can jump off stuff. The suspension is a little underdamped for someone my size. I'm about 200 pounds, but uh, in general, I think the suspension is not bad. It's a 
you know, it's, uh, it comes from a reputable company, Showa, and I think that it's, I think that it's fine. I think it's fine for what the bike is. I think that it's not as nice as other suspension that you might get on another $12,000 bike, but those comparisons are tough for electric bikes, which we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the Instagram questions, but uh, I think, I like, I like the suspension. Like I said, I think it's good for what it is, and uh, if it's a little soft for someone my size, that's okay, because maybe I'm uh, larger than the average bear. I'm not sure. Okie dokie, coming up with this red light, we can hit the brakes. Uh, I think I promised you early on that the brakes are pretty good, and they are. Nice light bike, of course. That doesn't hurt, but um, but yeah, it's a big, pretty big caliper there, and uh, braided lines, like I said, and um, yeah, I think brake feels good. It's even got an adjustable lever. Um, a pretty pretty good componentry. In general, one of the things that Zero has not done especially well in the past is sort of general build quality, like switches and stuff, and that's a little bit the case still. It's not, it doesn't quite somehow feel like, oh, these are Honda level switches, you know? But the, the high quality feel is coming around, I think, and I, I like that. And we're gonna punch it away from the stoplight. You guys ready? Here we go. Wide open. <laughs> a little power wheelie. Zip up to 60 miles an hour. It reminds me of uh, an MT-07 or a Z650 or SV650, something like that. You know, like a, like a middleweight twin. I think it's pretty good. All right, headed for the dirt road shortcut, which the supermoto style bike should be good at. However, we did get some rain. Oh, it's okay. The puddle, the puddle situation is not too bad. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about in this section is ABS. So we'll experiment with that first. And yeah, the ABS is pretty good. It's a recent... Um, Bosch system, so the, the, there's nothing wrong with the componentry. Other thing is trash control, which it does not have. <laughs> um, it's a little more controlled when it spins up. I know early electric bikes... <laughs> early electric bikes were really sketchy when they spun up because they would just they would just go nuts and they put you on your head so fast. This bike's not as bad as that. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Pretty fun. Hit the little jump. Um... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty good situation in general with um, the lack of traction control, but it is a consideration not having any traction control, I think, because if you hit a little paint line in the rain or something like that, it can, it can spin up quickly, and it, it does make enough torque to surprise you. So, something to think about, um, I think. So now is when we try and do a wheelie, right? And I think, I think we're going to have plenty of luck here. <laughs> here we go. <clears throat> Zero FXC wheelie time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, look at it go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Super fun. I always get a little sketched out at the balance point because I'm not very good with the rear brake and I always count on engine braking. And uh, this does have regenerative uh, braking on deceleration, but it's not as strong as engine braking in my opinion. And uh, so I get a little nervous with my wheelies sometimes, but, but I love that it does wheelies. <laughs> The little, the little power wheelies at five miles an hour are so much fun. Okie doke, you turn challenge and we have got plenty of room to go for it. Uh, let's see, where do I got? That's an embarrassment of, uh, of options now. Normally we're struggling to find parking spaces. All right, let's start on the uh, far side here. I think this bike's gonna do pretty well. We're gonna start just inside this line. We're not gonna put our feet down. We're gonna go full lock to the left. Turn and turn and turn in. Yeah. One and uh, one and two thirds. Something like that, maybe. <laughs> Pretty good. It's very good at low speed. Like I said, it's good at U turns. It's easy to control. It um, is a it's a splendid little uh, little supermoto style thing. It's great. That was a hoot. All right, we're going to rev it up now. Ready? Nice. Like that? Uh, maybe you don't like it, but uh, that's the way of the gun with an uh, electric bike, as you know. Um, I think it looks clean, too. I don't know. Yeah, I like that it's a simple, easy bike to ride, and it's a simple, easy bike to look at and understand. All right, let's jump into some Instagram questions here. What do you say? First question comes from Coot Rocks, who asks, they seem to be pushing the gray area. 
So for similar specs, is an electric bicycle a better option considering registration, insurance, licensing, gear, and purchase costs? This is a good question. Um, and it's a little hard, right? Like, yeah, I mean, does an electric bicycle make more sense? Maybe. I mean, if you have a short commute, you commute five miles. Yeah, probably, right? An electric bicycle is going to be cheaper than this. And you don't have to get a license if you don't have a motorcycle license already. You don't have to buy as much gear if you don't want to. Although, if you're on an electric bicycle that goes, you know, whatever, 20, 30 miles an hour, arguably you should be wearing gear. That's a whole separate podcast. The point is, yeah, there's certainly an argument to be made for an electric bicycle instead of a bike like this. And it's cheap. I mean, this bike's not cheap. And um, electric bicycles aren't either, but but they're cheaper. And and just like the sort of access and ease of use is um, is easier and they're less intimidating maybe. So I think this is a good point. Um, I just think that it depends totally on the situation. I mean, if you if you have if you have a 15 mile commute, 20 mile commute, and it's and it's like you know whatever across some suburbs and a city and a quick jump on the highway, then like no no way do you want an electric bicycle for that because this will be so much faster. And better in in a lot of ways. Next question is from Coyote Vigilant, who asks, "Do you think electric motorcycles like this are good for beginners?" Good question. Um, I do. This is a very approachable, very easy motorcycle to ride. The one thing I will say is the no traction control thing is a little surprising. It feels like it wouldn't be that hard, I guess, to to apply. I don't know. There seems like there's probably a lot of electronic. Um, whiz bangs and doodads in this day and age there's plenty of software available to make traction control for this bike even if it was pretty basic and it was switchable or something um because on a on a i rode this bike in the rain as i mentioned early in the episode and on a slippery surface or something the the back tire man it'll spin up in a heartbeat um which isn't necessarily dangerous as long as you're careful but it is a consideration um, and something that um, is less likely to happen with uh, a, a bike of this size that's internal combustion that might be smaller and less powerful um, from a power plant standpoint. So in general, I would say yes, uh, with the caveat that uh, no trash control thing is something I would consider if you don't trust yourself to control 80 foot pounds of torque, um, you're, that wouldn't be... Uh, it wouldn't be wrong-headed to think like, eh, maybe I'll get something that has trash control or get something that's a little bit smaller or or um, less intimidating from a power standpoint. But size-wise, ease of use-wise, absolutely. It's an awesome place to start. Next question is not so much a question um, as it is a comment from Eric with Vision, who said, it's more expensive than the 150 horsepower GSX-S1000 that Jen just reviewed. Um, so it's dating this video a little bit, but um, but yeah, GSX-S1000 from Suzuki just came out uh, or just uh, just did a press launch. My, my colleague Jen Dunson there did uh, a ride on the GSX-S1000. Yeah, that's an $11,000 bike that makes 150 horsepower. And you could certainly say that the GSX-S1000 is just better because it makes more horsepower and it doesn't cost as much money. Yes, you could say that. Um, you could also say that this bike is much better because it's way lighter. There's just no way a GSX S1000 comes close. It weighs way more than this. It's way more intimidating, way more difficult to push out of a garage, way more difficult to pick up if you tip it over, way more dangerous because it goes so much faster. There's plenty of things you can, you know, flip the script on it as well. Um, but from a basic motorcycle standpoint, it is a, a good point that uh, electric bikes do have a ways to go to compete with uh, the bang for a buck as far as horsepower and price that you can get from an internal combustion bike. Next question is from On Forks to Forks, I think, who says, total cost for one of these versus the great mileage a smaller dual sport gets, I just can't justify it. What do you think? So I did a little bit of math here. And um, yeah, basically, you know, you can get a little dual sport. You can get... Um, Let's just say um, a Honda CRF 250L or CRF 300L, whatever. That bike will get pretty good gas mileage, um, and uh, it's much cheaper. It's a little heavier, but it's sort of like approximately the same size-ish. It's not super moto-y, and you know it's a little different. But um, but in some ways, that bike is a good uh, barometer, I think, for sort of efficiency, just because. Uh, a CRF 250L or a CRF 300L are just really approachable and relatively small, and they're very cheap. I mean, you can get two of them for the price of this, maybe even three. Nah, probably two, new. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the the way it basically shakes out is it costs me. It depends how much electricity costs where you live. It depends how you ride it. It depends the range of the other bike. But if you're trying to compare uh, again those apples to oranges. Um, for what it's worth, it costs me about a dollar, 
a little more than a dollar to fill this up with electricity. <laughs> um, I think it was a dollar fifteen, and um, if I was going to fill up a CRF. 300L. I think it's like a two gallon tank. So gas is six bucks a gallon as I record this video. So approximately $12 to fill up. So um, quite a bit different. However, a CRF 250, first of all, it fills up quicker, obviously. And also the range will be better with a, a bike like that. And it's cheaper. So again, I think it circles back to the fact that you have to decide that this is a thing that you're interested in doing because of the thing that it is not because of other factors outside of, of, it, of you know, you, it needs to not make sense from a certain standpoint. And I think sometimes people want electric bikes to be everything that a gas bike is, and they're just not going to be. And I think that's something we need to get used to. Just like you have, you might have a dirt bike to ride on the dirt trail, and then you have a street bike to ride on the street. You might have this electric bike as a way to get to work and back, but it's not the bike you ride on the weekends. And um, I think that's something that we motorcyclists are going to need to get used to until electric bikes make some other massive leap forward at some point in the future. Okie doke, that's it for Instagram questions. Um, thank you all for submitting and uh, taking this journey with me. We just have one more thing to do. As you know, we got to put the Zero FXE on the Daily Rider leaderboard. So stick with me and we will do that right now. Hi everybody, here we are inside Revzilla West. Um, I realized actually that we didn't really complete our range conversations. I got the Zero FXE plugged in here to the wall in the shop um, and uh, the daily ride is about 25 miles and we've shown 23 miles of range when we arrived, just in case you didn't catch that. And so yeah, that's, that fits into what we said, right? For 40, 50 miles, something like that. Uh, depends on how you'd ride the last 23 miles if you'd make it, but um, for a 25 mile commute, uh, works fine. And if you can plug it in uh, at work and it can charge all day, then you get home no problemo. Uh, one other thing I did want to point out was this is the port right here. Can you see it? Oh, am I doing a good job? Uh, just behind the fork here in the, in the fairing. And then this uh, little cord um, is just a simple 110 cord, plugs into the wall and it tucks into this little, um, uh, little tube in the swing arm so you carry it along with. Anyway, that's enough uh, distracting talk, right? We got the Zero FXE in the hopper on the Daily Rider leaderboard and we need to decide where it lands. And actually, this is kind of a tricky one. So for the main Daily Rider leaderboard here, we're only a handful of bikes in now for 2022, but um, at the top, Harley Davidson's Pan America Adventure Bike, very good Daily Rider. Triumph Tiger Sport 660, very good daily rider. I mean, versatile bikes in general. Ride them across the country, ride them around the world, ride them to work, ride them to the grocery store, whatever you want to do. Um, BMW S1000 Double R, less versatile, but pretty cool bike, you have to say. Um, and then you got your Honda Navi down here, a little uh, sort of quasi scooter from Honda that we rode. And uh, I actually think that that's going to be an interesting conversation, right? I don't think that the Zero FXE really holds a candle to the BMW S1000 RR. <sighs> Why? I don't know. It's tough, right? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. I think Honda Navi or Zero FXE. What do you think? What do you think? Would you get a $12,000 electric bike that is impervious to fuel prices, almost, um, and power wheelies and is a great motorcycle in general, um, but kind of has, you know, limited range, or do you get an $1,800 quasi scooter that gets 75 miles to the gallon, um, but has drum brakes and feeble technology and you people might think you're riding your nephew's bike. Maybe, I don't know. Um, which one do you go with? That's tricky, right? Because you could say the Navi's a better bike, mm, but I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna say the Zero FXE is a better, um, daily rider. You know, if you did want to ride all the way across the country, you might get there faster on a Navi just because you could just keep on putting a gallon of gas in it at a time and off you go. Um, but realistically, um, in, in the type of environment that you would purchase a Zero FXE or a Honda Navi, um, I would recommend the FXE just because it's a real motorcycle that's really nice instead of a, a, a weird kind of um, <laughs> almost box store motorcycle. Um, in the Honda Navi. The next question, of course, is where does the FXE fall on the historical 2021 leaderboard with all the bikes that we'd ridden before? And here's where it gets tricky, where I was going to talk about the S1000 RR. You could argue that the Zero FXE is a better bike than almost all of these. I mean, 
like I said, cheap to fill up. If you're in San Francisco, New York City, some sort of dense urban environment and you just need to go a few miles at a time, you're realistically not gonna use a motorcycle for more than you know, 10, 15, forget about 20 miles at a time. I mean, hard to argue with the FXE, I think. It's light, it's small, it's easy to ride, it's fun. It's, I don't know, it's just, it's, a, it's an excellent solution for an urban runabout. I think it looks cool, it just, it kinda has it all. And yeah, it's expensive, but it's good. So you could say that it's better than anything other than a Honda NC750 DCT, maybe. You could, you could argue that. But I think realistically, you know, we've got the Kawasaki KLX 300 Supermoto down here on the leaderboard, and that's because it is limited in size and in range and in capability. Um, so I think that's where the FXD would go. I would put it, uh, I'd probably put it just below the KLX 300 SM. That's a, that's a, that's a kind of a tough call. But the point is, there are certain situations where a Zero FXE is arguably the perfect bike and can't be bettered by anything. But those situations are not few and far between, but limited. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, overall though, I'm impressed. I think I, I, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. And I think I, it makes me hopeful for the future of electric motorcycles more than anything. Okay, I think that's gotta be it. Um, I think we've spent enough time talking about the Zero FXE for one daily rider, by gosh. You know the drill. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. And I very much hope to see you next time on Daily Rider. Ride safe, everybody. And we got quite a bit of traffic this morning. So we are still not even going 50 miles an hour here on the, on the freeway. And it's interesting how <laughs> when you ride an electric bike, all of a sudden you're thinking like, yeah, nice. This is good. This is good. This is fine. I don't need to get to work anytime soon. It's fine. It's fine. I'll get to work when I get to work. I just want to try and like, I don't want to use too much energy. 